Shalom, shalom. Barakata Yahuwah. Tonight's segment is going to be on the Oz, the time of Yosef, the 12 Brat Yasharal tribes of producing a double portion. We're going to be going over a few words tonight in the picture of bet and how they're used. Because the picture of bet is what creates everything. From the creation up to the time, the time of Yosef. See, one thing that I do know where everyone is at, um, many of us are coming out of, many of us uh, are, are, are in, um, is we're in an identity crisis. We are, we are in a time that through a culture of being a Brett, in a language of a Brett, we've lost our identity. We're in an identity crisis. We are in a time, in Oz, that we need Yahuwah's double portion. So tonight I want to start with Yosef. Um, one of the things about scripts and the aloof bet was there was only one aloof bet during the time of Yusuf, and it was the picture aloof bet. There was no paleo, there was no modern. Um, I want you to think about the Egyptian holographs, Mitra holographs. The uh, we know there were pictures, and pictures tell stories, and pictures tell events. And even the modern number one top scholars in the world today when they go into Egyptology and, and, and the Egyptian and Mitram holographs they can read these and we find every one of the 22 picture aloof bit inside Mitram Egypt's holographs there's many many things that we need to understand more about what we call the Shemitic uh, proto-Canaanite. If you want to study it a little bit more, you can do some research on proto-Canaanite alphabet. And you'll find every one of these picture aloof bits. They're Shemitic language. It's what they call Shemitic or Shemite. It's from Shem, from Noah, from Adam. Just to give you a little research there. Tonight, I want to start. I've been doing on the aloof, the very first letter. So, this is the very first aloof bet. This is the very first teaching. Um, we need to return to the ancient path to the very first. This holds answers. When we start looking at our what a lot of people, especially in Christianity, they always try to look to our future. But you know, your Brett mind, for those that don't realize how all this works in our culture, in our language, we don't look to our future to find answers. We're not searching for the future and everybody's trying to to prophesy and everybody's trying to proclaim what's coming. But if the Abret, if we want to learn our future, we have to learn our past. You see, our past holds the answers to our future. If we know what's happened in the past, 
We know what's come in the future. In other words, there's nothing new under the sun. There's nothing new. There's nothing new in Yahuwah's word. Everybody in the scriptures, when we read, even in this English Bible Bible, we're not reading English. We're reading a word of a breath that's been translated into English or some people have tried. But there's so many mistakes in there. We have to go back to the R, a Brett language. We have to go back and learn what the a Brett language is. And the aloof bet describes everything in detail. And so Let's talk about Yusuf a little bit because he was one of the, the, one of the main problems today is everybody seems to have problems with our own brothers and sisters. And where did that originate? Where did it start? Well, we know it started with, with Cain and Abel. But let's progress a little bit further in time, in Oz. And let's, let's look at Yusuf, okay? We know that all 12 tribes were the sons of Yukul. You know, from the father of Abram, Abraham, Yitzi, Yukul. He had four wives. He didn't have a wife and three concubines. He had four wives that brought all 12 sons that brought us our 12 tribes, 12 pillars, the 12 apostles, 12 seasons, a calendar, events, a recycling, a, a circuit, a tukufa. Repeating events. You see, what most people struggle with and don't understand is every scripture has been recorded and every account through here, through the beginning of this little book, all the way through the end, are nothing no more than a repeating event. And the only thing that's changed for us is the people's names and their locations. So if we want to know our future, we look to our past. We look back. Matter of fact, on this ancient path that we are returning to, we look at the problems, the circumstances, and the things that our forefathers have went through so that we can find what we ourselves are doing wrong or need to do to fix to get right. By learning from their past experience so that we can correct ourselves so let's start with Yusuf let me start here in about in 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 about a shit if you don't know what about a shit is it's Genesis it means beginning in chapter Gulls, chapter 37. And Yukub dwelt in the land of his father's sovereigns, in the land of Canaan. Remember, ain't Cain came from Adam. Cain is a big, large area. Jerusalem is just a little speck in this whole land of Canaan that we were to dwell in. And this is the genealogy of Yoko. Joseph being 17 years old. It's the word Yaz. Yod. Zan, the hand and a plow. I 
you to think about that for a minute. Think about Yosef. Think about what he did when he was in Mr. Egypt. Think about what his task was to plow and plant grain. The hand of Yah, Yod, and the Zan, a plow. 17 years old. Yod is 10. Zan is 7. A person's name and age determines numerical value. A person in a Brett was named according to their character of what their task is supposed to be and what it's going to become. It's going to affect everything because when those experiences happened by the interpretation and meanings in that person's name, it declares their purpose. And many of y'all don't understand this because in our English, our Russian, our German, our French, all the different 70 nations, names don't have interpretations. Names don't have meanings. But in our Brett culture, we do. And Yosef, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brothers. And the young man was with his sons of Bila, the sons of Zilpha, his father's wives, wives. And Yosef brought an evil report of them to his father. To his Ab. Aloof. Bet. Aloof. Bet. Together the first and the second letter. Remember we're doing double portion. A double. Two by two. Line upon line. Precept upon precept. Here a little. There a little. Bet. Two. He brought a report to his father, his Ab. And when Yashriel Ahab loved Yosef more than all his children, because he was the son of his old age. His old age. And he made him a long robe. But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and were not able to speak peaceably in shalom to him. And for those of you just now learning this language, the word shalom for peace, it really means a destruction coming that brings peace from chaos. A destruction coming and its end result is peace, prosperity, rest, comfort. And Yosef dreamed a dream and told it to his brothers. So they hated him even more. And he said to them, Please, please listen to this dream, which I have dreamed. And see, we were binding sheaves in the midst of the field. And see, my sheep rose up and also stood up. And see, your sheep stood all around and bowed down to my sheep. Let me tell you about sheaves and this grain, that seed, and the head of the grain. None. We got wheat, 
we got barley. And barley will produce, become more mature, faster. And they both stand up. You know the parable that Yahushua talks about where the wheat and the tares were planted together. And he said, leave them alone because if you take the, the tares out of the wheat, you'll disrupt the wheat and they'll both die. And the barley, the heads of the barley mature sooner and bow, leaving the wheat standing up. The Oz, the time, the time of maturity, the time of fulfillment. See, there's a whole calendar behind me. And I probably won't go too much into the calendar tonight. There's an appointed time from aloof the first month. To the Zan, the seventh month, till we find Yahushua's return. Yosef is a type of Mashik, an anointed one, a type and shadow of Yahushua. Yosef is to become prince, a ruler. A pharaoh, if you would say, in Mitzram, Egypt. That even the, the pharaoh will listen to, as a priest, Yahushua is of Melechizedek. As Yusuf becomes the high priest in Mitzram, Egypt. And his brother said to him, Shall you indeed reign over us? Shall you indeed rule over us? So they hated him even more for his dreams and for his words. And he dreamed still another dream. Not one, but that. Two dreams. That is the number Numerical value, two. Two dreams. This is a double portion teaching. And he dreamed still another dream and related it to his brothers and said, See, I have dreamed another dream. And see the sun, the moon, and the eleven stars bow down to me. Let me make a statement here. I don't know how many of you really know the Abret language. But there's three things recorded in this one verse. And this right here, in chapter 37, Yos, about a sheet Genesis. In verse 9 is the first time the sun, the moon are mentioned. And you have the sun, moon, and stars. For all of you out there, let me, let me talk to you for a minute about a little calendar concept. For all of you out there, that are reading translations in English, and you open your Bible up, your Bible, your confounded, confused, lying little scripture book. I've got one too. I've got, I've got a couple of them. But let me let me give you some forewarning and real wisdom. This is the first time in Scripture that your moon is mentioned. It's not mentioned in creation days. And if you'd want to get all disrupted and mad because your ach, your brother, is telling you the truth, I want you to go and Google it for yourself. 
and you need to read the Abret language, and you need to know this language to read for yourself what's written there. The only thing in the creation days on day four mentioned are the stars, not the moon. And you say, well, the sun's not mentioned, but the sun is a star. As a matter of fact, Oh, Yehusha, Yehusha Masha, if I could find it, what did I do with it? I don't know what I've done with it. Oh, Yehua. I don't know how many of you can read a Torah, but I can read Torah in the modern script, Paleo, and the Picture of Lufbet Torah. All three. I want to show you something. I want to read from Barashit. Barashet, Genesis, beginning, right here. Verse 16. No moon. Hachyoch, Bayam, stars. The word your rock is the moon. There's no Uyas Elohim et Shana Hama U Rut Hadayom et Hama Or Arud Uel Lama Mashurut Hayom Uet Hama Au Uchat Un Lamash Lat Haeolu Ha Uat Hach Uk Bayam You did not hear me say the word your rock, moon. It is not there. You can go back to Genesis Barashit 14 through 16 in Torah. And you will not find the word your rock, moon, for your appointed times, your Shabbats, your feast weeks. It's not there. The reason why I bring this up is because in Barashit 37, yours, verse 9, is the first time the moon's mentioned in your Torah. Torah, that your English is translated or close to translated from. We're reading a Brett, by the way, but if you don't know a Brett, you will not know that this English sometimes mentions things that's not there because translators put it there. Listen. This is about restoring. This, this life of Yusuf is about restoring the 12 tribes. You know why? Because his brothers lied on him to his father. Listen, y'all don't maybe know, but I went 20 years and I'm still going through 20 some more 
that I finally met my two youngest sons, but I only met my middle son, and I'm waiting on my youngest son to return. And I just met my young, my middle son this year after 20 years. And his mother had lied so much that my youngest one is scared to meet me. And his brother lives in his same household and talks about me and him meeting me. Our father's want us to return. Ab Yahuwah wants us to return and Him return to us. This story that I'm telling you, these scriptures, this truth of what's written there is to restore us. Forget the lies. Learn the language. I will help you. I'm not going to lie to you. Yahuwah did not give me all this to lie. He's not a liar. He gave me this right here to restore me, to help restore you. I don't do this for you. I do it for me. But I share everything I come through and come with to you. You're my ark and my akuti, my brothers and my sisters. We are the same tribes, the 12 tribes, the pillars. And his brother said unto him, shall you indeed reign over us? Shall you indeed rule over us? Do you notice? There's a double portion, a double saying every time, over and over and over in these scriptures. I'll read this again. And his brother said to him, Shall you indeed rule over us? Shall you indeed rule over us? It's a double portion. It's written twice there. The scriptures do this over and over. Yahuwah is reminding us because we are... We're hard-headed. We're stiff-necked. So they hated him even more for his dreams, two dreams, but the house of Yahuwah, his father's house, they all dwelt in the same tent, the dwelling place, for his dreams, plural, and for his Words and I don't expect anything different from any of you. I expect plenty of you to hate me for telling the truth. Does that bother me? No, because I'm going to rule, I'm going to step up in Yahuwah's word, and I'm going to believe Yahuwah's word over you or anyone else. I'm going to learn this ancient path and language. If I fail, it's because I wanted to and I was too lazy to seek out truth. The meant I failed because I let me fail. Not what anybody else was saying or doing. Not what I think anybody else is thinking about me. Not what anything else that anybody else is going to say. Not anything else that someone's going to threaten me for. Ain't no vaccine going to come into my veins. And ain't neither one of y'all going to get in my way. And ain't nobody going to take my shawl laying in my bed. And ain't nobody going to teach my shawl but Yahuwah, the Ruach HaKadosh, and me. And ain't nobody going to teach me but Yahuwah's language. And if you don't like what you hear, you need to learn so you can see for yourself. 
I've been doing this 20 years. And I got a long ways to go. Just like Yusuf. I got a long ways to go. And then finally, whenever you gets me to where I'm supposed to be, I got a lot of work to do when I get there. I got some famine to go through. Oh, yeah. I got some preparing to get to do. I got some things I got to go through. But you know what I'm going to do when I finally get there? I'm going to tell the truth. I'm going to know how to use this so that it's going to carry me through. And I hope that it's going to carry you too. Because Pharaoh listened and repented and his whole Mitzram Egyptian people followed along and listened to Yusuf. Because where he was at was in Yah, Yahuwah. In the language. And they borrowed all of this picture of Lufbet and were using it in Mitzram Egypt, but they didn't know how to use it properly. They didn't know how to interpret it. They didn't know how to read it. They didn't know what it really was used for and couldn't do it themselves. And so Yahuwah sent in a Brett boy, a little lad. Because he had the heart, a lub. Yud is 10, bed is 2, 12. The heart, the Torah is written on to the 12 tribes teaching of the house. Whose house? Yahuwah. Bob's house. And see, I've dreamed another dream and see the sun and the moon and the eleven stars bowed down to me. Not twelve. Eleven. This is talking about his brothers. And he related it to his father, his Ab. And his brothers and his father rebuked him. Now this word rebuke, it's not what you think about in, in English. He didn't rebuke him and say, oh, you shut up. Oh, you're wrong. Oh, you're not right. Oh, quit. This, this word rebuke in this sentence, in this scripture. Listen to the rest of this. He rebuked him. And said to him, what is this dream? He questioned him, what is this dream that you have dreamed? Shall we, your mother and I and your brothers, indeed come and bow down to the earth before you? And his brothers envied him, not his father, his brother. Not his ob, but his father guarded the word. You remember in Torah, which is his Torah, that we are to guard the word of Torah in our heart. It gives and brings hope. It gives and brings oh, promises in Yahuwah's word. And those brothers went out and went to feed their father's flock in Shechem. And Yashriel said to Yosef, Are not your brothers feeding the shut flock in Shechem? Come, and I send you to them. So he said to him, Here I am. You know the word I am? When you tran really translate it properly back to the abret from the English, it says Yud, Hey, Yah. I am. Yah. We turn back to Yah. 
And he said to him, Please go and see. If it is well with the brothers and well with the sheep. He went out to see the ox, the sheep, the flock. And bring back Shub, return. Shin, the teeth, bet of the house. Word, the bar, to me. So he sent him out of the valley of Hebron, and he went to Shechem. And a certain man found him, and see, he was wandering in the field. And the man asked him, saying, What do you seek? Seek me, Yahushua says. And he said, I'm seeking my ark, my brothers. Please inform me where they are feeding their sheep aloof their ox, their sheep, their rams. And the man said, They have left here, for I heard them say, Shema, he heard them, Shema. Let us go towards Dothan. So Yosef went after his brothers and found them in Dothan. And they saw him from a distance. And before he came near them, they plotted against him to kill him. To kill him. Their own brother. To kill him. They plotted it already. They had it in their mind. If our little ock, our little brother comes, we're going to kill him. We're tired of him being a tattletale. We're tired of the... Je we're, we are jealous because our father not only loves him, but he... Oh, Yahuwah. He put a coat, a long coat of color on him. We're fixing to go into this word in a minute. And they said to each other, See, this master, they already called him master, of dreams is coming. See, they're prophesying already. They're foretelling it already, and they ain't got a clue what they're doing. But they know it in their, their nefesh, in their spirit, in their lube, in their heart. Yahuwah's already moved. The Ruach HaKadosh. Now, when come and let us now kill him and throw him into some pit, into a cistern, into a well, just like Yeremiah just like Daniel, the repeating event, this is the start of it. It shall say, some wild beast has devoured him. And let us see what comes of his dreams. I hope some of you mock me. I hope some of you are Brett out there. See what I can do with the breath, the language, the pure lip of Yahuwah. And you say, ha ha, let me see what you can do with it. I'm not haughty. I'm not, I'm not boastful. I've been doing this a long time that I'm going to stay within these meanings. And I'm going to prove Yahuwah to his word with it. Because I'm his child. I'm his band. I'm his son. I didn't just take on the name Zeph and Yah. That name was gave because of what I earned. Because I've been through it. I didn't name myself. Another of Brett seen the talent that is hidden in Zephan from Yah in this man. But Reuben heard and Yasha rescued him from their hands and said, let us not strike his being. And Reuben said to them, shed no dom, no blood. Throw him into this pit, which is in the wilderness. 
and do not lay a hand on him in order to Yasha rescue him out of their hands and bring him back to his Ab father. So it came to be when Yosef had come to his brothers and they stripped Yosef of his robe, the long robe which was on him. And they took him and threw him into a pit, into a cistern, a well. And the pit was empty. And there was no water in it. And he's in the desert, by the way. And they sat down to eat a meal. And they lifted their eyes and looked and saw a company of Yeshmaelites coming from Gilead with their camels, their gamols, mm. bearing spices and balm and myrrh. These are all things to send the anointing oil from a dry well where Yusuf laid. Going to take them down to Mitzram, which is Egypt. And Yehuda. And Yehushi come from the tribe of Yehuda. Yehuda said to his brothers, what will we gain if we kill our brother and conceal his dom, his blood? Come and let us sell him to the Yishramites and let us and let not our hand be upon him for he is our brother, our flesh, our ark, our flesh. And his brothers, Shema, listened. And men, the Mennonite traders passed by and they pulled Yusuf up and lifted him out of the pit and sold him to the Israelites for 20 pieces of silver. Y'all, if you don't know what that letter 20 is. It's the next letter after the letter Yud, the hand, and it's the open hand. It's the palm of the hand. It means a year of release. The kuf, the open palm of the hand, numerical value 20. A year of release. And we're going to go into this year of releasing a Shemitah and a Jubilee toward the end of this. And that's what we're facing here in a few years. Do you not see what Oz, what time it is? And the men Median traders passed by, so they pulled Yusuf up and they lifted him out of the pit and sold him to the Israelites for 20 pieces of silver. And they took Yusuf to Mitzram, Egypt. And Reuben returned to the pit and see Yusuf was not in the pit. And he tore his garments. When you see the word tore person, a person tears their garments. Do you know, if you don't know the Abret culture and the experiences, just like the, the veil rented at Yahushua's time, and that high priest was standing there, he said right there, that's your mashi. That's your anointed one. That's your leader. I tear my clothes open. And I release my position to the authority one. And that's what Reuben did. He rent his clothes. He tore them because he knew that that was his leader, the anointed one, the mashik. Mashik only means anointed and Reuben knew this. Maybe you and others don't know, but in the Abret we know. It's a culture. It's a language. It's something that we're supposed to recognize and see. So they took Yosef's robe and slew a male goat, a loof, and dipped the robe in the blood. I'm going to stop right here. I'm going to 
to stand over here for a moment. This is aloof. It's a one-year-old goat. It's a one-year-old ram. It's a one-year-old ox. Keep that in mind. That's the Dalit doorway. It's the Mim. Second and the third letter. Dalit. Mim. It's the word Dom. It's the word blood. You see, this, me this message goes all the way back to Adam. It's a repeating story. It's a repeating event. There's nothing new under the sun. There's nothing new under the sun. That scripture is the sun. Not the moon or stars, the sun. Keep that in your mind. We're children of light, not darkness. Where's Zadok? Zadokus. The sun. Kuf. So let me go into talking a little bit about. Where did my phone go? About the word Yusuf. I should have already done this. The Ruach this morning or this evening. Tonight, he's the one moving. Yeah. Let's look at the word Zephaniah. Let's look at the word Yosef first. If you want to learn to study, do a little etymology. Yosef. The name Yusuf means increaser. May he add. From the verb Yusuf. To add, increase, or repeat. Double portion. Two. Double. Repeat. Add. Two by two. He had two dreams already with his brothers. The word use of the verb means to add, increase, or do again. It curiously has no extant derivatives. Do you know the first letter in Yusuf's name is the hand, which is the hand of Yah, and the word suf? The words suf be samic pay in the name yusuf. It means to add, increase, or double, repeat. The word suf in the word name yusuf. The word suf means a store, a place of to buy or purchase. Now wait a minute. You're talking about yusuf. Where they came and bought the grain, his 12 tribe brothers, or the 11 of them that came, and they traded and they bargained, and they got the grain during the famine? Yes. You see, names in our Brett language show our identity, our purpose. So 
and let me go to the next part because we know Yusuf becomes Zeph and Yah. What does the word Zeph and Yah mean? Yah stores up. Yah secret place or Yah hides. Secret place of Yah. To hide or store. With the name Yah. At the end of the word Zephon. And Zephon means of the north. And if you know the story about Yusuf becoming the, given the name Zephon Yah. He reigned in the north of Mishram Egypt. That's where his house was given to him. How many Zeph and Yahs are in this world where you have a secret place in Yah? And I don't mean something you're hiding. I mean something you're proclaiming. And you're grieving it back to the 12 tribes, but they hate you for it. But Yahuwah has a task and a purpose you see, he was thrown in the cistern in the well by his brothers. It was a type of prison. And then when he gets to Mishram, Egypt, I'm going to speed this up a little. When he gets to Mishram, Egypt, Farah's wife decides that she wants a little panky-banky with him. He was a beautiful young man. He was a good-looking man, and she wanted a little pleasure from him, and he wouldn't do it. So she lied on him to her husband. And her husband had to believe her. So he threw him in prison there. And he was in a well. He was in a dungeon. He was in prison twice to double. Yusuf means to double. Let me darken this up a little bit. It's a double portion. He had two dreams with his brothers. Remember that? Double. It's a double portion. Line upon line, precept upon precept. Here a little, there a little. We don't get it overnight, folks. So let's go in here into the story of actual, the um, double portion here. Let's get into some dreams. Because I hear a lot of people saying, I have dreams, I have dreams. When it comes to the word of Yahuwah, your one dream ain't going to set the stage for me. You tell me you have one dream and it don't mean nothing to me. Because in our Brett culture, you got to have the same dream twice. Because we have a double portion coming. So if you ain't had that first dream yet, when you finally do, you better wait for the second one before you start to speak to me or anyone. That bet. Since I'm on the word bet, before I get too far into this, I got four letters written up here on the right side of this board, which would be the left side of your screen. Zan, Nun, Aim, and Bet. And every one of those have a common denominator. And you know what the common denominator for each one of those letters is? It's in their spelling. It's the last letter. There's only two letters in each one of them, the parent root word. It's the none. It's a seed. So maybe I should give this to you now before we get too far along so that you'll understand the rest of this story.
Zan. It's a plow. Has the nun at the end, a seed. The plow seed. It's agriculture. Nun. Spelled with the same letter, another seed. You can't grow a plant without another plant. Has to fertilize. Me and my wife can't make children without each other. Neither can you and your wives. Your children didn't come by themselves. Has to be two of you. A in the I means to know, experience, to see. It's spelled with the A and a nun at the end of it. Shin, the tooth. It's what you chew with seed with. It means to consume, destroy. It's what you do with your food. The grain, the bread, the seed. You chew it up. You can destroy it when your mouth break it down to consume it. It nourishes you. Zan, plowing the seed. None, planting seed after seed. None means generation, continuation from generation to generation. The aim means the eye to see the seed, see life. Shin, the teeth of the seed. Gnashing of the teeth of the generations of Yahuwah. How many times have it, is it we go through the gnashing of the teeth of people? The gnashing of the teeth of our brother from generation to seed from generation to generation. You don't speak against your ark. You speak against Yahuwah. That's what they did with Masha. That's what they did with Yosef. So let's go back in the word. Let's go back to the word time. Oz. Let's go to the bottom sheet 41. Genesis beginning of 41. And it came to be at the end of let me excuse me. Let's back up a little bit because we do things two by two. Go to chapter 39. And Yosef had been taken down to Mitzrayim and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, a captain of the guard of Mitzrayim, brought him from the Yishmarites who had taken him down there, and it came to be that Yahuwah was with Yosef, and he became a prosperous man, to prosper, to increase, and was in the house of his master, the Mizrite, and his master saw that Yahuwah was with him, and that Yahuwah made all he did to prosper in his hand. The hand, yod, to suf, a store. Yusuf means to double, to prosper. When he first got there, he was prospering. His name, Yusuf. And it came to be from that, from the time that he appointed, appointed him over his house, his bet. Hmm. And all that he had, that Yahuwah blessed the Mithrites, house of Yusuf's sake. And the blessing of Yahuwah was on all that he had in the house and in the field. Oh, Yahuwah. And he left in Yosef's hand all that he had. And he did not know what he had except for the bread which he ate. And Yusuf had was handsome in the form and handsome in appearance. You see the prospering, the double portion. 
I want to go to chapter 40. I'm going to speed this up a little. And after these events, it came to be that the cupbearer and the baker of the sovereign of Mitzram sinned against their master, the sovereign of Mitzram. And Pharaoh was wroth with his two bet in his house, his two officers. So he put them in confinement in the house of the captain of the guard, in the prison, the place where Yosef was a prisoner. See, maybe it's time I, I show a little bit of this before we go much further. The word bet noon, it's the word ban, it's the word for son. I don't want you to get too confused on this word Ben or son. It's not like a father son. And I know a lot of people talk about, oh, I'm the son of Yahuwah, or I'm the son of my father, or I'm the son of this, or I'm the son of that, or Yahusha is the son of Yahuwah. But I'm going to stop right here because I need to give you a little bit of definition about the word Ben, son, before we go a little further to understand what the intelligence of Yahuwah is doing. Ben. The word Ben. Bet. The house of the nun. Seed. Ben. Yusuf is the Ben of Yukov, his father. Ban is the word to build a tent panel. It means intelligence. The picture graph bet is a picture of a tent, and the nun is the picture of a sprouting seed. You see, he was still sprouting from his father's house and represents continuity. As the seed continues, the next generation. The combined meaning of these letters mean the continuing of the house. The tent was constructed of woven goat hair. Remember they took the blood of the goat, put it on the coat, said here, Father, Ab, the father of Yusuf's house, of his son, Ben, and put the dam, the blood, the tent was constructed of woven goat hair. Over time, the sun bleaches and weakens the goat hair, necessitating their continual replacement. And each year, the women make a new panel approximately three feet wide in the length of the tent. The old panel is removed, being recycled into a wall or a floor foundation. And the new strip is added to the tent. And since the tent is only replaced one small piece at a time, the tent essentially lasts forever. It's a beam, a component of construction with the ban, a tent panel. There are many similarities between building a tent out of goat hair panels in the building of a house out of sons. The idea of building a house with sons can be seen in Genesis Bada Sheet 3 or 30 and 3. Just as the tent panels are added to continue the tent, remember Yusuf, he wasn't the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh. He was the son. Way down the line, he was a continued panel added to his father's house. And panels are added to continue the tent. Sons are born to the family to continue the family line. Just as the tent is continually being renewed with new panels, the family is continually being renewed with new sons. And what is a ban? What is a son? One who continues the family line. 
Bennett, Ben, Bet Noon, Nun, Ta, the last letter is the word Bennett. It means daughter, a daughter of the covenant. Also, a village that resides outside the city walls as the daughter of the city. And we're going to see Zephaniah, or Yosef, when he was given the Zephaniah name, was given a wife. The word ban means to build. The building of a family or a structure for housing the family. Ban means intelligence. The skill of the mind and hands to build. Before the tent is constructed, the location and orientation must be carefully considered according to weather, view, and size, the planning, and the building of a house, the structure, or family. Intelligence. One able to plan and build. See, Yahua had already had a plan for use. If we hear about this, we talk about this, We've heard Christianity try to teach, Yahuwah already has a plan in your life. But it means to understand. Cunning, skillful, teacher, taught, consider, perceive, wise, view, discern, prudent, consider. Between, as the wall is between two sides of the tent. Understanding. A nephew, an uncle, a cousin, the abret, a son, a ban, is it just a father, son? It's anyone you take in, an outsider. Yahuwah chooses who he gives his intelligence to. You don't. Just because you have children, a ban, a son, or Bennett, a daughter, doesn't mean that they're going to carry on what Yahuwah gives us. My father didn't give me what Yah, our Ab Father, has given me. So let's go a little further here. So we know that he has two dreams. We got the baker and the cupbearer. He interprets both of their dreams, bet two. The cupbearer dies. The baker goes and gets released. He goes back to Pharaoh. He forgets about Yosef being in jail and in prison. And the Pharaoh dreams two dreams. And not only two dreams. But this is the second year. Remember, everything's in twos, people. A but, a double portion, two, ban. And it came, this is chapter 41, Ma, Mem, Aluf. Chapter 41, Shemot, Bereshit. And it came to be at the end of two years' time that Farah had a dream and saw him standing by the river. and saw seven cows coming up out of the river, beautiful looking and fat, and they fed amongst the reeds, and then saw seven other cows coming up after them out of the river, ugly and lean of flesh, and stood by the other cows on the bank of the river, and the ugly and lean of flesh cows ate up the seven beautiful looking and fat cows and then Farah awoke. He's woke up now after the first dream. So he's seen ox. And how many of them? Seven. 
Zan. This is the word aloof. This is the first dream. And there was seven aloof, seven ox. This is the word Oz. Aloof Zan. Time. We get the word time in this dream. And then Farah slept and dreamed a bet, a second dream. Bet number two. Watch what's fixing to happen. And the seven, and he slept and dreamed a second time and saw seven heads of grain. Number two is bet. Grain is none. Seed. Bet noon makes sun. Watch. What's happening? Coming up on one. Aloof. Stock. And then plowed. Plump and good. And saw seven lean heads. Zan. Seven. Heads of grain. Swallowed the seven plump and completed heads. And then Farah awoke and saw it was a dream. Double portion. Aloof, one dream. Bet, two dreams. They both come from Ab, Father Yahuwah. And the son, the ban of Jacob, ban, the son, The intelligence of Yahuwah through the dreams, a double portion, Yusuf can interpret through this alphabet and the words in the Abrat language. And it came to be in the morning that his spirit was moved and he sent and called for the magicians, the Mitzram, and all its wise men. And Farah related to them his dreams. But there was no one who could interpret them for Farah. How many of you can do this? I'm not boasting or bragging. But how many of you have the ability? Well, let me tell you what, my Ak and my Akuti. If you'll pay attention to me, and you'll learn how I've learned from Yahuwah, Ab Father, You'll be able to do this, and you'll know if someone's telling you a truth, we're going to lie, because we're going into some times, we're going into some things, in an appointed time, and we're fixing a famine, or we're going to feast. And we're probably going to famine a little bit, or we're going to feast all the way through the famine. And that's why Yahuwah is using Yusuf. Except for y'all for it. It's all done in the abrupt, pure lip language. Zephaniah 389, he speaks about that later. Returning and restoring of the pure lip in the language. Then the chief cupbearer spoke to Pharaoh, saying, I remember my crimes this day. Farah was wroth with his servants, and he put him in the confirmation in the house of the captains of the guard, both me and the chief baker, and each one of us dreamed a dream, one in one night. One night, two dreams. Ab is the word Ab, Aluf, Bet, Ab, Father, Yahuwah. Oh boy. He and I, each of us dreamed according to the interpretation of of his own dream. And there was with us an abrupt youth, a servant of the captain of the guard, and we related to him, and he interpreted our dreams for us to each man. He interpreted according to his own dream. And it came to be as he interpreted for us 
it came to be, he restored me to my office, and he hanged him. One was restored, and the other died. A loaf fed in the same house of Farah, and a loaf, one man, was restored. Yahuwah is making a restorement, not just for Yusuf and his family, but for Mitzram Egypt. So however many of y'all out there want to talk bad about Mitzram Egypt, and every time you look at Mitzram Egypt and you think about it's all sin, it's all bad, let me tell you something. This is the Jubilee year coming. And Yahuwah restored not just Israel, because the Gentiles, if you want to say, the Goyim, the nations, where we all started from Adam and Noah. We all got away after the Tower of Babel. It's what we're returning to, the pure lip. That's who Egypt was, and they repented right here, this whole storyline. Then later we see that they didn't whenever Masha was there. And then later we see Babylon from the Tower of Babel. And then we see Babylon later when Yonah was there. And they repented. And then when we see when Yahushua was born and he was sent to Mishra, Egypt. And he dwelt there under safety. Let me tell you who hadn't repented out of all the nations in the world. And that's in this new nation we live in right here in America. This nation has not repented, not once. Babylon repented. Mitchum Egypt's repented. So before you start going off talking about Babylon, before you go off start talking about Mitchum Egypt, how bad and how disgusting and all the things between them two, them bet, them two nations, you better look at the nation where you're living right now. This is where you're living in. This nation has destroyed and not repented yet. This one. Maybe individually some people have. But as the 12 tribes that are scattered amongst this nation, they're just now trying to figure out who they are, who you are. And you yourself are figuring out who you are. There's a Zeph in y'all in your life. So we get the word Oz, Aluf Zan, because in this dream that Farah had, and Yosef answers saying, It is not in me, but let Yahuwah answer Farah with shalom peace. And Farah said to Yosef, See, in my dream, I stood at the bank of the river and saw seven cows coming up out of the river, beautiful looking and fat. And they fed amongst the, the reeds. And they saw seven other cows coming up after them, poor and very ugly and lean of flesh, such ugliness as I've never seen in all the land of Mitchum, Egypt. And the lean of all flesh and the ugly cows ate up the first seven. Aloof first, Zan seven. In that time, Aloof Zan is the word time the fat cows and yet when they had eaten them up no one would have known that they had eaten them for they were as ugly as at the beginning then I awoke and also I looked in my dream and saw seven heads coming up on one stalk coming complete and good and then saw seven heads and withered lean scorched and they eat and by the east wind 
coming up after them, and the lean head swallowed the seven good heads. And I spoke to the magicians, but they was no one who could explain it to me. And Yusuf said to Farah, the dream of Farah is aloof, is one. And who can explain to me? And Yosef said, the dream of Pharaoh is one, aloof. Yahuwah has shown Pharaoh what he is about to do. In this Oz time of seven years of plenty and seven years of famine. Then the seven good cows are seven years and the seven good heads are seven years it is aloof, one dream. Two dreams. Aloof, one, bet two, from Ab, Father. Aloof, bet is the word Ab, Father, Yahuwah. And this is the word which I spoke to Farah. Yahuwah has shown Farah what he's about to do. See, seven years of great plenty are coming in all the land of Mishram. But after them, seven years of scarcity of food shall arise, and all the plenty be forgotten in the land of Mishram, and the scarcity of food shall destroy the land, and the plenty shall not be remembered in the land, because the scarcity of food following, for it is very, very severe. And the dream was repeated to Pharaoh twice, two times, double portion, Yusuf. Increase, add, double, repeat. And the dream was repeated to Pharaoh twice because the word is established by Yahuwah. And Yahuwah is hastening to do it. And now that Pharaoh looked for a discerning and wise man and set him over the land of Mitzram. Let Pharaoh do this and let him appoint overseers over the land to take up the one-fifth of the land of Mitzram in the seven years of plenty and let them gather all the food of these goods years that are coming and store up grain under the hand of Pharaoh and let them keep food in the cities and the food shall be for a store for the land, for the seven years of scarcity of food. Remember the store? It's the word Samic Pei, Suf, in the name of Yusuf, a store to store the foods. Yusuf, even in his name, shows the word store. Maybe you don't really believe what I'm saying. Maybe you really don't know the language enough to say, oh man. Maybe you think I'm making some of this up. Maybe you think I haven't been doing this long enough. And I'm doing my best in English to teach you. Oh, I said I'm doing my best in the English to teach you. Because I'm in a Brett mind right now trying to express this and translate this and transliterate it to an English speaker that don't know my Abret language of y'all. Maybe you need to understand. I'm trying to come across so that you're restored a little more. I'm trying to be a Brett crossover to get you where I'm at. trying to bring the pure lip to you. I'm not worried about crossing back over. I know where my river is at. I know where the 12 stones to step on is. Oh yeah. I can do it in the light or the dark. Think I'm boastful. I think I'm proud. No, I know my identity. Mm -hmm. 
suf, to gather, the lip. The pitchgraph samik is a picture of a thorn representing a turning. The pay is the picture of a mouth combined. These mean turning the mouth, the rim, or lips of the bow, of the bowl. The circle around it, the bowl, is used for gathering things together and for eating. What are we talking about? It's fixing to happen. Suf, the lip, the bowl, the threshold, the lip of the door, the threshold, the basin, the lip. means a gathering place. A souf. A store. A place where stores are gathered together. A threshold. An assembly. A gathering of people. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not trying to make myself look good. I'm trying to make us look alike. We are made in the image and likeness of Yahuwah. And we're supposed to all be a Brett and Ak and Akuti. Brothers, sisters, that all look like in the image of Yahuwah. No separation. So what happens when we put the aloof and the nun together? We get the word on. Now you have to remember that Yusuf was bought by the high priest of, of, of Farah, and his name was on. And the word on in Ebret means aloof, nun, aloof, one, and seven, zan, a nun, the seed on, and it means to produce. A time, Oz, a Lufzan, of on to produce. Now, to understand this, the aloof, the cow, the oxen, and there were seven of them, it's the word Oz, and it means time. And then when we have another dream, the aloof, there was a single, another dream, which was a second dream, but aloof and none, which is seed, that the grain that ate it, the other grain seven, is to produce. And on was the priest that bought Yusuf. The priest bought Yosef because in the word of Yahuwah, his name was on to produce for the future while they're in Mishram. Now, whoa, I know this goes way over your head. But if you don't know this language and this loof bet, you won't never get this. And this is my task that Yahuwah gave me. This is my purpose in Seph and Yah. That little hidden secret place in Yah. You know, the remnant, this is my place, my identity. You don't want to step in the shoes I walk through to be able to hear, to be able to tell you in front of this camera right now what I've been through to deliver this message. Because just like Yosef, I've been to prison more than once. And for innocent things and being back again, And I ain't ashamed and I ain't scared. Matter of fact, I was a prison minister in Christianity and then had to go back in there and tell the people in the truth and the bread about Jesus Christ, the name that's blasphemous, and go back in being a bread and tell them the name Yahusha and Yahuwah and fix my lives. 
and repent of the things I did. So don't think that I'm all boastful because I'm out about telling the truth. And I ain't scared of who's going to get upset, mad, whatever. Done been down that road. So let's learn about some of the words that the four letters, you know, the four letters that I pulled out that all end in the uh, aloof bet with the letter none, that they end in the letter none in their spelling. And we got Zan, none, Ain, and Shin. And out of these four letters, you're fixed to see the other part of the hidden story come to life out of their spelling and meanings and in the spelling flipped around backwards. Ooh -wee. So let's start first with a five-fold ministry part. Let's start with the word ban, son. So the son of Jacob, the ban, the son of Jacob, and is also the son, the ban of Yahuwah, do you know if you take the word band, bet, noon, and you flip it around backwards? And now you turn it around backwards. Bet, noon, ben, reversed, is the word Noon bet, noob. Do you know what that word son, ben, reversed to noob means? It means to prophesy. Whoa. I know that got your attention. And that is what these two dreams of the seed of continuation and life, the word Ben, Jacob's son, his son Ben, Yosef to be Zephaniah, he prophesied in his two dreams, interpreting two dreams of two different men and interpreting Pharaoh's two dreams in that second year for the seven years of famine and the seven years of Plenty. Take the word son, ban, which means intelligence, and you flip it around to noob, it means prophesy. Is that not exactly what he did? So let's take the word zan. Now, now th this is going to go into a little bit more about the time that this was happening because Zan is the number seven. And anybody that's a Brett that knows the number seven, we know on the seventh day is, a, is what? Shabbat. But we also know that every seventh year is a Shemitah. It's a year of rest. But Zan is spelled with Zan and a seed. A seed. And that means a plow plow and plant seed and seed is none and you know what the number of numerical value of none is if you're a Brett you'll already catch this it's number 50 what's the 50th year it's a jubilee a jubilee year So the spelling of Zan, the spelling of Zan, Zan number seven and none, 50, shows the Shabbat, sabbatical years of a Shemitah seventh year and a Jubilee 50th year. And both of those happened at the restoration of Yashriel coming
in Yusuf's time. Now, if that isn't something, now how many of you out there claiming to be Yahuwah in the name can put all that together and bring it to the table? How many of you are teaching from the aloof bet, the word and language from creation to us a breath so that we can understand how Yahuwah has constructed everything, designed everything, and given us everything to follow? So let's go on to the next little, little word here. So we got the word Zan. Well, let's, let's flip it around backwards. The word Nas. Do you remember what they did whenever they had that coat? That long coat of colors of Yosef? So let's take Nun, Zan, Nas, the word nun, Zan, Nas. Do you know that's the word sprinkle? Where they sprinkled the blood of the goat on it? And Zan also doesn't just mean a plow. It means a cutting implement, a cutting tool to cut the seed. We plow the seed, but we also cut the harvest. The first month, the aloof, and the seventh month. Guess what those are? Those are harvesting months for the appointed times. First for Passover, Pesach. The seventh month is Sukkot. Oh, Yahuwah. Oz, the time of the appointed feast. Zan, it means the word Nas. They cut that ox's goat's throat and they put the blood on the coat of many colors. They sprinkled it. Noose. Come on, folks. These words right here are telling the whole story. Just from the picture of Lufbet spelling of the letters. Let's go over here to, uh, of course, we know that you take the word ban, son, and flip it to noob, means to prophesy. Now, I'm interpreting the prophecy now. I'm interpreting the scriptures from the aloof bet. I'm reversing the whole story to you. I'm showing you and teaching you out of the aloof bet, the word that became flesh. Yahushua. So then we get the we get the next letter, the Ain, the I, and the Noon, to see the seed. See, this is what Yahu Yosef had to see. The seed for those seven years of good and seven years of famine. He had to know what he was looking at to do with. The purpose was the seed. Did you know that you take the word Ain and you reverse that? And you put the yud in the middle of it, and you get the word color. Color. The code of many colors. Now let's look down at the very end, and we find the word shin right here. The teeth and the seed. Shin. And you reverse the letter spelling and the spelling of the uh, Brett letter shin. And you get nosh. You know what nosh means? It means a loan or a debt. Whoa. Do you remember Benjamin? When they took the cup, Yusuf told him, he said, bring me your younger brother. And they said, no, no, our father be mad. You remember the cupbearer that died? Got his head cut off. When he interpreted the dreams, there was two of them, but only one lived. The bet, you know, aloof one. The cupbearer died. Do you know who became the cupbearer? Yusuf did. You know what he did with the cup? He put it in a satchel. 
Then he sent the guards out after his brothers left when they came to get the grain. And he had his brother arrested and kept him as a loan and a debt, a noosh. Do you know what ended up happening, Mo, was? He ended up telling his brothers who he was. You see, their eyes couldn't see the seed of his father. They sold him into slavery. They put the coat in many colors. They sprinkled that blood on it. Their own band, the son of his father. They cut Zan. The seven years of famine. Seven times seven's 49, folks. That's a Shemitah. A Jubilee is the 50th year. Let me show you what else happens after a seven times seven. Let me show you with the word ah. You got an aloof. Knox. You got the hat. Fence walls. The late letter. The first. S when you do a counting of a J Shemitah seven different times and you get seven times seven is 49. That 50th year is the first year of the next seven. For all you out there that don't know how to count the Jubilee year, it, it isn't to, you don't count one through 50, and then you get to your 50th year, and then you start counting after 50 is one. You count your 50th as the first year of that seventh, which would be the eighth of the last of that 49th, seventh would be the eighth, the first year, just See the aloof and eight, one and eight. This is showing a pattern. Ach, our brother. Ach is the word brother. Boy, 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 we got some things to figure out and learn. You see this picture aloof bit and the spelling, the numerical value. You know, each one of these picture aloof bits have five meanings. They do five things. First, there's a picture. There's a number. Then it become a word. And then become an interpretation, a meaning, a definition. Then they become a letter. It's a five-fold ministry, folks. If you don't hold this five-fold, five is a letter. Hey means reveal. If you don't know how to do this and how all five of these have to be used together, you're going to mess it up. You're going to take this right here and you're going to try to put something together and you're going to go wrong with it. There's not very many picture aloof bit teachers that have the ability to stay within the fivefold understanding and not come out of it. It's not about what you think, it's about what this is. It's not about what you want it to make it this to be, it's what this is and you stay within it, do not come out of it. And you'll find it to be solid foundation truth. Don't bring your vain imagination in here thinking you're going to prove flat earth or anything else with it because you're not going to get it. Because if it was there, I'd already have it. I said flat earth. Yes, I did. My wife would be the first one to tell you she thought she was going to come in here believing flat earth that I was going to prove it with it and she was going to prove it with it and it ain't been proved yet. Because it ain't there. I'm sorry, folks. I'm not sorry. I'm not going to go outside something that's not there because of imagination of something I believed in before I got this. This proves truth. And if you want to dispute me with it and you want to go try to come against me, let's take it to the picture aloof bit and let's prove something then. Show me what you can do with it if you're that advanced. 
because I don't know any Petra Lufbet scholar that can do it. And if you think you've got less than 20 years, then you can do it. Come bring it to me and show me. I want to see it so I know. I want to increase. I want a double portion. Don't bring me a bunch of English scriptures. I don't care what it's about. Thinking you know so much in English. Because I'm going to take the Hebrew Abret language even. Those that are Abret, that speak Abret, know Abret. And I'm going to take this, the aloof bet that made their language, and prove them right or wrong. And I'll work on it, and I'll wait on you until he does it. And I won't move and believe anything until then. It's that Oz, it's that time. You who is tired of the lies, deceptions, he's tired of it. He's ready to restore us, folks. Zephaniah 3 8 and 9. Say it over and over and over all the time. It's the pure lip to restore us through the aloof bet. Zephaniah 3 and 9 is the only scripture that has every aloof bet letter in that verse. Restoring of the pure lip, the language. Isn't that your desire to be restored? I don't want to be saved. No, don't save me, Yahuwah. Restore me and provide for me. Just like you did Yosef in Mitzram, Egypt, all the Egyptians. You didn't save them. You restored and provided for them. And through that, your restoration was his family in a place that people think he never should have been. That's y'all, Yahuwah's choice, where he puts us and what he does with us. Don't ever think where you're too far gone. Don't ever think that you're out of place. Don't ever think the circumstances are too bad. I'd have never thought I'd have got my shaw, my wife. That was the case. I got the best wife and the best shaw in the world. She's over laughing. She knows. You know what? She got the best man, too. I love you, Julie. But I love you who are more. But I'll treat you like you who treats me. I'll give you what you who has gave me. And I'll love you like you who loves me. Oh, shalom.